Hi everyone, David Maley here. Today we're going to do some really cool. We're going to work with COVID-19 coronavirus data from a hospital in New York City, and we're going to determine survival outcomes. Is a patient going to die or are they going to live based on this data? Now, this is a small sample of hospital data from New York City, so it's not like the entire you know United States or anything like that. We're going to have some really cool graphs like this one here. We're going to be able to track the important or determine the importance of the various uh, pieces of data, the columns of data that we have or fields available to us. So let's get started. So first we're going to take these libraries right here. You've got HMISC, Core Plot, Performance Analytics, GGPubR, Cable Extra, and Tidyverse. Cable Extra, you don't need to have it on there, but it makes your data look pretty. So I'm going to show you what that does here in just a second. So let's open this up a little bit here so you can see the whole row of uh, the code. And so the first what I'm doing right here is test data one, that's our data frame. I'm going to read.csv, that's the read uh, common delimited value function, and it just tells it the location of where that file is. Uh, the header is true, and that, which means that there's a header on it. Each uh, uh, our column has a uh, header for it. And, uh, or, and then uh, the sep or separator equals comma. So we're going to run that, and then Below it we have, we're going to put the head of that, that's the top six, into the DF data frame, and then we're going to use the cable function on that to make it look pretty with stripes and uh, sizings and full, not being the full width. So let's do this. If I do that, we get this. Let's bring this out so you can see what we just built. And there's our data. It looks nice and pretty, easy to read. shows you all of the columns, and the main one we're looking for is the outcome. That's the one we're going to predict. Was there a death? Or survival okay survived or death so next we're going to do is we're going to look at it for bias right and this is by the way this is a two-part series there's two videos to this make sure you watch the second one when the first one's done all right so uh, looking at bias what we want to do is we're going to look at this table function on our uh, main on our data frame but and specifically on that outcome uh, column so let's do this and right down here you'll see on the bottom here the number of deaths survived and not infected. Now keep in mind, it looks very high. You know, you're seeing on the news, one out of 20, one out of 30, maybe even one out of 50 or one out of 100 die. But the thing is, is um, the reason why it's high is this is a hospital and this is numbers of people that were very sick and went to their hospital. So if people weren't sick or they didn't get to the hospital, they're not counted in this. So there's a lot of people that survived and uh, did much better that were not included in this data. So it is kind of skewed and you have to understand that. The bias really between these three is not that significant uh, when you look at it at the surface, survived, not affected, and death. Okay. So now check for missing data or NAs. If we have missing data, we can use this, the summary function. At the bottom of any of these rows underneath max, it will tell you NA and the number of them. We don't have any in there, so you can look at them all. There is none. So they're fine. If we did have some NAs, we would just run this code right here, which is na.omit and then your, your data frame. So you just do that, and it's not going to hurt anything here because there isn't any NAs, but that's what you would do. Next, you want to check your distribution of your variables. Is there some skewness, right? This is what we were talking about a little bit earlier. So let's take this str function and what we want to do is we want to look at the factors here right now there's one of these uh, fields here that we're going to have a problem it's called percent overweight right so the problem with the percent overweight is a percentage and it's a text file and it's not going to run right so we have to go and make it into a numeric so we're going to use this is dot numeric paste of the data frame and that field so we use this if we don't do that, it will error out and not work. So we do that, we run that, it's fine, it doesn't error out. Then we got to do th two things. We got to create a training set and a test set. So let's go through that. So we're good for a training set. Remember, there's three things here. They could have died, they could have survived, or they could have been not infected. Well, guess what? We don't want to look at the not infected, right? Because they came from a car accident, they came from a fall, uh, they might have had cancer. I don't know what the anomaly is or what their sickness was, but it's not coronavirus or COVID-19 related. So we don't want to take that into account. So we're just going to look for death and survive. So we got to, we're going to split this into two parts, data one and data two, based on the outcome equaling death or equaling survive. This is how you do that, using which. That's the way this function works right there. 
Then next, I'm going to use set seed to 101. And the reason I, it doesn't have to be 101, it could be any number. I'm picking the seed as 101, so I can re reproduce it later on if I needed to. Then we train the uh, we set the training set sample size to 75% of the data. So we're going to have 70% in that one and 25% in the test data. So what we're going to do is 0 0.75 times number of rows and row of data one and data two, and then we put a sample of one to the nth row in data one and data two. Put in training set one, training set two. Then what we do is we use this where we take that data one training set one and training set two and use the correct numbers from that. That's what this is. And then we use our bind to combine these two together. So that's basically what you're doing right there. And that gives you, this whole thing gives you the, uh, the training set right there. Okay. Then next we want to create the test set, right? So it's basically the same, very similar thing, except that now we're using the, the opposite. Right? So we put 75% of it in the uh, training set. Now we're taking the negative of the training set. So you're just taking the opposites of it. See that? And put in test one, test two. Then you just are buying those together. And you have your test data. So you have the training data and the test data. Right? Now what we want to do is we want to use the uh, random forest method. And uh, we're going to use that for first way. We're going to do multiple ways here to look at the predictors, right? We're going to see we value these columns here and see which ones work best. So the random forest you bring in with this random forest. Oh, let's get that off of here. Uh, you bring that in with this library call to random forest. And then what you do, let's open this up so you can see the whole thing there, is output.forest1 is the output for the forest. You can call it whatever you want, but that's what I call it here. And then you've got the random forest function of your column that you're trying to determine is your first one. And then you use the uh, little similar symbol here. And then age uh, plus, you know, the different various uh, columns here. Okay, and then what you do below that, you use comma data equals test data one, which is our data uh, frame. Then you use uh, a random forest to get the importance of it. Now, keep on, we're not using the test data uh, here. We're using this right here, data equals test data one, okay, versus these two training data and test data are for later on. So we're using the original data frame here uh, to go and determine the uh, predictors here. So let's do that. And if I run this, right, I don't have to run the library, I already wrote uh, write it in. What you'll get is this, you'll get the mean decreasing GI and I. What that basically is, is the higher the number, the more important that predictor is, right? So obviously when you look at this, clearly some things are gonna snap out of you. Age, uh, COPD, cardiopulmonary disease, that's what COPD is, and married. Um, also, low but less significant is college grad and similar sex, you know, male, are they male, are they female? And uh, do they smoke? And actually, that's pretty interesting because you would think that smoking would have a higher uh, effect, but apparently it doesn't. You do have people that get COPD that do not smoke. Um, and COPD is uh, right here and is a higher uh, determinant, not as high as age. So age is a big, serious determinant according to the random force model. Now what we're going to do is going to use another method called the Bruda method. So this one just shows you right here this. But you want to use two different methods before you pick your predictors or devalue some or whatever it is you want to do. So we use the library Baruta, right? We load it in. And then let me open this up so you can see the code that we're using here. Uh, let's do this. Okay. So you got Baruta output. And basically, it's instead of doing the random force, which did earlier, you do Baruta on the outcome and the same thing. But you have data equals NA omit, you want to get rid of the NAs, test data one if there are NAs, um, do trace equals two. So that's what you do for that one. Then you print the Baruta output and then uh, take the names from it based on decisions and final decisions. And is it confirmed or tentative? So it's going to say, are they good? Are they bad? Is this a strong determinant or not? That's how it does it. Then you print the Baruta sign if, and then we're going to go and plot it down below. And the, the best way to look at it is the plot which is uh, you put par m fro, which is going to give you just one plot on that screen, and then plot of the Baruta output, which we get from right here. That's basically what we're looking at, that first one right there. And the axis of dot seven, uh, labeling, not really any labeling and variable importance. So we can call it whatever we wanted to. You could say predictor importance if you wanted to. But that's basically what we're doing right here. So what we're going to do is we're going to run this. 
okay this whole section right here if I run that and hit enter now it looks kind of ugly right there so let's bring it back and it'll snap back I just want you to be able to see all the code for that there so when you look at this you got your importance and then you've got uh, your various fields here your column names plus you have the minimum mean uh, and the max in here. Those come with the Bruda method. So you, I don't have a column for the minimum, the max, and uh, the mean. But those are in there. And what it does, it compares all these and determines what are your, so like here's zero right here, right? And it's what is above that, what's below that. And even though this one is above it, the mean for it is below it for smoke. So smoke actually, it's saying, could slightly hurt uh, or have a negative impact if you use that predictor. Same thing with married. In college grad sex is marginal it's probably gonna help but it's not as important as anything green um, and so you have these two don't worry about these three you can't remove them they're the mean mid and uh, the min max and mean but these two that are green have a significant impact it's saying on your data so if you take this and take that and add that to what we did looked at earlier which is the uh, random forest you will see age it was big on both. Now COPD is also a big factor for this one. So I would say both of these are, plus maybe sex and some other things. So now you can go uh, on to the next part where we're going to go into building our logistic regression model, testing it, graphing it, and determining what, you know, can we really predict whether someone survives or dies from the uh COVID-19 or coronavirus based on uh, the usual data that they would have available at a hospital. So uh, stay tuned. Be, you know, look at the next video. I'll publish it really quickly here, and uh, you'll see all that in the next video. Thanks again for watching. If you haven't taken a moment to, please subscribe, like, and share, and then go on to the next video. Thanks.